Today is October 1st, and this is a big month. You know, I'm actually underneath the weather. I've been in bed for the last 24 hours, tired, sick, I don't know. You know, honestly, the reason why I got sick is that I was outside this weekend. I wanted to go to the gala by Lagos, um, the Nigerian event. I was outside doing content. I wanted to do this big content for the work that we're about to do. So I went to the Lagos Gala for Nigerian independent pre-event. And then I was on Times Square and I just shot this amazing content announcing to everyone the work that we plan to do in Nigeria. I had my whole African outfit on and I was just gonna do this major content. And you know what? I got sick. I didn't really get a chance to edit it, but you could take a look at it. I got sick. I didn't get a chance to edit it. I was like, you know what? I just need to be real and honest with people. I'm not trying to sell people nothing. I've been doing this for way too long and there's been so many impact that we have been able to accomplish the last couple of years. I'm like, you know what? Let me just sit here and talk to this camera. I was actually watching Pinky. Pinky did an amazing job. Um, when she was able to raise about 160 something thousand the last time i checked for this uh supplement line that was going out of business because um you know there just wasn't enough to cover whatever they need to cover in terms of inventory in terms of people support and you know i know the young lady was speaking about you know things are getting expensive and it's called Just Move Supplement. And Pinky just gave an inspirational story about what this young lady is going through and how we need to come together to support. And I was just so inspired by that. I even went in and purchased some items myself because you know, I've been trying to get myself in shape. So um, that's how we come together as a community. Um, so I was like, you know what? I don't need to do no fancy content. Let me just speak to my people, my community, and see if they can support in every shape or form. I think what I learned from that whole experience is support necessary comes in multiple ways now. You can financially support someone. You can social media support someone by sharing their content, commenting, or you can donate your time or you can do something real fun. Get your people together, your company that you work for, corporate sponsorship, and see if you can come together and support your cause. So why October 1st is such a big day for me? One thing is today I am going to announce the one thing I've been working for for the last two years is to open a dog grooming school in Nigeria. Yeah. And today is a very special day because today is Nigeria Independence Day. In 1960, they became independent from the British colony and Nigeria is 64 years old. It's such a big thing is because I'm not even Nigerian. I know, right? Like, why is this guy who's actually was born in Sierra Leone, Freetown, been in America for the last 20 something years, opened a business that is worth 14, has been in business for 14 years. Why is he going to do work in a country that he's not part of? I have to ask that question. I have to answer that question to myself over and over again. I'm like, and the answer that came to me is, they're Africans. I'm African. We're all West Africans. So it doesn't matter where I want to support. But the truth is, for the last two years, we've been doing research. And out of all the countries that we looked at, including Sierra Leone, these people in Nigeria would gain the most benefit. The opportunity is there. 
because there are more and more people who are requiring their dogs. There are more and more people who see their dogs as family members. Nigeria has over 200 million people. The wage gap is there. There are more and more people who want to service their dogs similar to the way we do in the West. It's not enough business in Sierra Leone. Ghana comes second and Nigeria is prime and ready for what we do. So people ask me, what is it that you do? I am a dog groomer, a business owner, and a pet entrepreneur. I have a nonprofit. And for the last four years, we've been focused on animal wellness and connecting people through the love of animals and what that means. Originally, when we first started, was during the pandemic, I lost 90% of my business and I wanted to help people who had animals that needed dog grooming services. So I got all my friends together and we travel around the country and we've been to 16 different cities and offer our services at no cost to people who require grooming services that couldn't afford it. We raised well over $90,000 on our GoFundMe platforms, got some donation, got some awards, and for three years, we travel every summer from one city to the next city, and we had over a hundred different groomers who participated in the Park Relief Tour. So that's where it started. It was such an incredible moment to bring black and brown people together and all the counterparts to go around the country and do something amazing. And I still commit to want to groom 10,000 dogs for free. But something happened that I had to do a switch. It was the last tour and it's somewhere between uh, Cincinnati. It was the last tour. And somewhere between Cincinnati to uh, Chicago, I sat down like, man, this is getting really difficult to put together. It's not enough funding. I've been rejected multiple times. I'm just finally applied to get my nonprofit. And even with all the great things that we've done in the pet industry, it's so hard begging people for products, asking for funding, and getting people together that want to do the work. Just as the odds was against me. Okay, now I'm funding it with a lot of my money. And it's getting to a point where this got to make sense. And it wasn't making sense to me. And some incident happened. And just to be super transparent, it wasn't anything crazy. It was the fact that I got sick. Some individuals also got sick. And I started to realize that some people are just here for the joy, the fun, and just the excitement of just being out of their regular lives to come have fun, do some um, charity work. But I kept questioning, what's the impact? Are we really impacting people's lives? So that just hit me. And I talked to one or two of my friends and I just said, how can I be more impactful by the work that we do that can change people's lives, especially black and brown people. And to help animals in need and educate people about animal welfare. So I sat with that and I just sat with that for months. I canceled future tours. Um, I just got into my own personal space and said, Brian, if you're gonna do this, you got to go all the way in. You can't go in halfway because you're not a halfway type of guy. And I said, I'm going to commit to what I said. I'm going to go all the way in. But we have to change course because it has to make sense. Our objective is connecting people through the love of animals, creating opportunities for pet parents to learn or to keep their animals if they can't afford services. And 
is to bring more black and brown people into the space. Those were my objectives. And I really wanted to move in a different way. So I had a Zoom meeting. It was a WhatsApp, actually. It was a WhatsApp meeting with John Mo James. Hey, see all the work that you're doing in, in America. And I know you're from West Africa. Do a tour in Africa. I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. I'm like, do people in your country love animals like we do out here? And like, I've heard stories that in your country, some people eat dogs. And I had to be completely transparent with him. I'm like, what we do is saving animals and educating the next generation of animal lovers and pet parents. Like, is this something that Nigeria needs? So I started doing my research. I started diving into the Nigerian culture. Mind you, I'm from Sierra Leone. I'm Muslim. My mom doesn't like animals like that. I mean, she tolerates them. I know people in Africa do have animals, especially in Freetown. But the level of care and the things that we do to animals in the States, I just had a whole question mark. I'm like, this doesn't make sense right now. But as I do my research, as I start tagging in and looking into the Nigerian culture, starting to understand other West Africans, looking at Ghana, I'm like, okay. This is where I'm from. And the other thing that I love so much is giving people opportunities. That's what I do. And I looked at what the pet industry has done for me. In the last 14 years, I've worked with summer youth employment. I've hired multiple groomers. I've trained multiple groomers. I've worked with multiple groomers who now own their own salons. One of countrymen of mine, Ronald. I was just talking to my best friend, Terry, and I remember in Ronald, he was born in Sierra Leone, wanted to learn dog grooming, and I was adamant about it because I know in my country, this is not something people would do. He reached out to me multiple times. He wanted a job. I'm like, no, 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 until I had a conversation with my, my good friend, Terry. He's like, give him a shot. Let him come in. Let him do the basics. Let him... I don't know, let me watch dogs, let me walk dogs, let him do something. And I did. It wasn't easy. But after five years or so working, he's now a groomer in Brooklyn and he has his own shop. Yeah, changed his life. I don't wanna get too personal about his life, but I know dog grooming has helped him to become the man he is today. Even with the ups and downs, even when I had to fire him, hire him, even with all of the issues that we had, at the end of the day, I'm proud of him. I could tell you multiple stories of black and brown people that within the last 14 years, either have worked for me, have collaborated with me, or have learned from me. Some it didn't work out, some it did. So when I think of Africa, I think of me. I'm like, I've been here for 14 years, graduated from a historic black school, was working in one of the best banks, and I started my own business in Harlem. What am I gonna give back to my people? And that just hit me, I'm like, how can I give back to my people the skill sets that I've learned? When in my country, we call it parable. So let me speak in Creole for you a little bit. They say, if you teach somebody for fish, it all go angry again. So that was embedded me as a child. If you teach someone a skill set 
that they can learn and then they can survive from, they would never go hungry again. So when I talk about my fellow man, Ronald, who now is a business owner in Brooklyn that learned how to groom, he would never go hungry again. And I'm not saying he was hungry in the beginning, but working with animals, it feels different. I'm sorry, it feels different. I don't think I could work with anybody else if the animal is not included. Because I truly believe that animals are here to teach us a lesson about humanity. So when Maddie Fun reached out to me and said, hey, we want you to collaborate with Positivity Chain. We're going to help fund you to do research about potentially open a dog grooming school in a federal prison. I jumped at the opportunity. I was like, yeah. If I can connect people through the love of animals, then I'm accomplishing my life journey. I love this shit. That's all I gotta say. I love working with animals, I love my staff, and I never feel like I'm working. I get to live the life I want, and I get to continue to help people because of the people who support me. This is what the Dark Father brand is all about. And I'm not saying it because I'm here explaining to you who I am. I'm saying it because I truly believe this. And even if I wasn't the Dark Father, that has never changed. So, to put everything in perspective, going back to Nigeria, going back to Ghana, doing all these workshops with my team of Labrie, Gianna, and Latonia. It wasn't just a trip. It was such an emotional, spiritual connection with us and the people of Africa. The dogs, the ambition. These individuals just want to learn a skill set that people have told them, like, why are you doing that? This is not what we do. This is not culture in an industry that no one really knows much about. All the videos they see on YouTube are the ones who can afford to go to veterinary school. That's all they know. They just know vets. They don't know anything. And even with that, they have limited resource to really understand the practice of veterinary medicine. So now here we are introducing dog grooming in a way that no one else before us have a thought to go to Africa to do this. Yes, some Nigerians, like some of our partners, have figured it out. They have hired international groomers to come in and teach their individuals, which is great. But they've only cracked the surface. When we came in, we knocked the doors. That's what we did. And when I say we knocked the doors, is that we discovered out of 200 million people with the wage gap, there's still enough animals in Lagos where anyone who's an animal lover are willing to spend the income to give their dog their best life. They cook jollof rice for their dogs. Some of them feed dog food. They take their dog to the vet and some of them learn how to groom their dogs on their own. And now we are giving them the tools from our partners and the education and the hands-on volunteer opportunity from my team. We're going to change lives. We just knock the door down and we're changing lives. So think about it. If you're West African, if your mother, your cousin, your auntie, 
someone's back home and you send them money. For every hundred dollars you send back home, that's a person's salary for a month for most West African country. Not all. There's been a lot of investments and the dollar has weakened over the years, but that's a lot of money. Most people spend $100 on a dinner or a weekend brunch at Boulevard Bistro, one of my favorite spots in Harlem. Most people spend $100 just walking outside of their doors. But someone back home, when I say home, my home and all homes, it changes their lives. So open these school to teach someone an individual skill set that they would never go hungry again, it's my mission. That's what I properly taught international is about. And doing the same work in the States for second chance citizens or anyone who looking to learn a skill set that they can apply and make money doing in the space of pet grooming, obviously they have to be animal lovers. If I could step in and support and help, I'm all about it. So we're opening a dog grooming school in Lagos, Nigeria. That's a 2025 mission and we need your support. And you can help in so many ways. The first and most important ways is by donating some money to our GoFundMe. The second way you can help is going to our Amazon list and purchasing any of the items we need to open the school. And if you're a dog groomer and you can't do one or you can't do two, but you have some really good tools that you don't longer need and they work, you can ship that to me. And if you're not a dog groomer and you work for a company that's all about giving back to 513C, you will get a letter for your support that you can claim on your taxes. Given Tuesday, but a couple weeks away. So anything you do is tax deductible. But if you just said, Avis fan, you don't have the finance, you can't do all of that, you can still help. You can help by sharing our content, you can help by saving, you can help by commenting, you can help by introducing us to your community. Because I truly believe it takes a village to raise anyone. So if you can help someone in your community may be able to support and help us. That's how this thing goes. These ecosystem that we all have as community on social platforms or in our actual community is this is how we affect change. So I wanna say one more thing before I, I end this long talk with you guys, because I like numbers, you know, I like to break things down in numbers. Remember when I talked about bet $100? So after doing our research, an average Nigerian who probably got just high school or secondary education, their average minimum wage is less than 100,000 Naira. So that's like $10. That's what some people make a month. $10. 200 million people. 185 million of them are making less than 200,000 Nairas a month. It's not less than $10. I did my math wrong. Um, let me do the math again. 200,000 Naira is 
it's less than let me actually do that math because I, I want to I want to make sure I get this right so I'm gonna log in on Google and do this math quick Naira compare to dollars all right cool so 200,000 Naira right now I'm looking at the exchange rate is a hundred and nineteen dollars and eighty eight cents that's how much most people in Nigeria makes so you could be a banker you could be a first-year nurse you could be a veterinary assistant um, it could be a lot and you're probably only making a hundred and twenty dollars a month so let me do the math again. Average dog grooming in Lagos specifically is 20,000 Naira per dog. So let's do the math on that. That's $11.99. So a Shih Tzu, a Yorkie, a Pomeranian, a lapsa apsu, a chow chow, typically it's around eleven dollars and some cents to groom. So if these groomers that we teach can make eleven dollars, they don't need formal education. We're gonna give them all the skill set. And they groom five dogs a day. There's enough dogs. We identify that it's over a hundred thousand dogs of people who have the money to want to be able to get their dog grown. Mind you, there's a lot of expats who are from Europe, America, who are living in Nigeria. And there's a lot of people who are well off, who have some money, and they want their dogs to live their lifestyle that they live. Dogs are no longer outside for these individuals. They're inside. They're little cutesy, cutesy little puppies. And people are taking care of their animals, just like how we do in the Western world. So if someone can make, let's say $10 to do simple math, $10 per dog and they go five dogs. Right? That's what we're gonna go. We're gonna go, we're gonna keep everything simple because of the exchange of boom, boom, boom. Let's look at it in Naira. Let's say one dog is 20,000 Naira and someone go five dogs. That's 100,000 Naira that they can make in one day. And if they do it in two days, if they groom 10 dogs in two days, that's 200,000 Naira. That 200,000 Naira, it's more money than most people in professions be able to make. And Nigerians, we all know Nigerians like to work. Not the Nigerians out here that be showing too much. I'm talking about regular Nigerians who are dedicated to what they do and they're very passionate about their work. They're going to be your best employee. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I sprinkle that because I'm going to talk about that a little later. They're going to be your best employee. And you know why? Because they want to work. If they love what they do, they're going to do right. But if they work for 30 days, that's 3 million Naira. So we train them, give them all the skill sets. They're working, they're grooming and educating Nigerians about animal welfare. And they can make 1 million to 3 million Naira a month. That's breaking the generation curse. That's giving that individual, their family, the opportunity to live better, the opportunity to save, 
the opportunity for that economy to change and to narrow down that wage gap because some individual have the money but don't have quality service to be able to do this. And you ask, do Nigerians want to do this? Yes, of course. After two years, we've been able to identify individuals that want more. And there's more that's available. We just need to establish the school that can train individuals every year, 20 students a year. Those 20 students are gonna be working on their umbrella to be able to make income to survive. And then they'll be able to train more and then they'll be able to train more. Obviously, Nigeria is becoming one of the spaces where there's more and more dogs are being bred. More and more different dogs are coming into Nigeria. Some of them are coming for protection reasons, but a lot of them are coming because people in Nigeria just want a companionship and they love dogs as companions. So this is what this is about. I'm taking a skill set that I have learned that made me successful here with my team of people, and we're gonna go back to Africa, and we're gonna apply that skill set to individuals there, that then they could create an opportunity for themselves and their family, and they could make enough money to bridge that wage gap. And then one day, when the relationship between Africa and the relationship between Nigeria is better, and these individuals, could potentially get work visas, guess who they're gonna be working for? Every groomer in America that's crying for help. Because we all know there's a shortage of quality groomers. Just, just what it is. I'm looking for groomers right now so I can spend my business. And I understand with all these visa laws, the way it works, you gotta look in the States and try to exhaust all the opportunities before you hire internationally. But if the opportunity is there, why not? So my African brothers and sisters, you're going back home this December. Join me to give back to people who just needs the opportunity. That's all I'm asking for. And however you want to support us, there's so many ways. But it's my life mission. So no matter what, we're going to get this done. Some people run away from their responsibility. And some people face it head on. I'm just the kind of guy that face it head on. Because if this has changed my life and I'm able to live the type of life and I can support the people I can and I can help my family, imagine what this would do for others. Either in the States or in Africa or any other country. Because this animal thing, it's a big deal. It is. It's a big deal. A lot of people, some of your top groomers, top business owners in this space, only have a high school diploma or a one year college. And some of them, they came into the space after retiring or leaving a job that they don't like. So pet grooming is going to grow. So as the population of animal grows, we're going to need individuals who are experts that can support, but not just support, that also focus on animal wellness animal welfare, rescuing, adopting, volunteering, giving back. All of it has to happen cohesively because animals are here to teach us one or two things that we don't know about ourselves. 
And I, I'm gonna live a testament of that. Because I know animals has helped me with my temper. I know animals have brought me peace. And I think animals have helped me in so many ways when it comes to loving, compassion, and just having a support system. So the way they are in your lives. Yeah. So if I can connect people through the love of animals, this is why I'm here. So I ask you to support however you can. I hope I gave you enough information to do that. And if you want to do that, it's very simple. Comment below Pop Relief Tour and you get a DM and you can choose how you want to support us. On that note, 